Kids are dismissed. Thank you, Jesus. So, we have been studying. Listen, I'm calling these teachings, uh, <coughs> I'm calling these teachings the, uh, like the apostolic letters. <laughs> Amen. The apostolic letters. And look, one of the things that I'll tell you about apostolic letters or the letters that were written by the apostles, I said it last week, that the very words are drenched or saturated with biblical truth. And they're really commentary on the Gospels, if you will. Uh, really a commentary of all the Old Testament passages that had gone before. <clears throat> but then also commentary on the truth of the Gospels that we learn from Jesus. Amen. All right. So what we've already covered this Colossians. And I really wanted to kind of just utilize this as more of an illustrative purpose. And kind of like try to, to finish it up. But right here. And um, I got I to gotta go to the King James Version. And look, let me, let me just say a couple of things before we get started. I want to say a couple of things. You know, as the Holy Spirit begins to move more in the midst of our services, as He begins to heal and minister and set free, and we've already been getting testimonies from various people about what God's doing in their heart and in their life. So it's becoming real clear that God is moving in His own way. And, he, and, and we want to let the Holy Spirit... Be the Holy Spirit, obviously, right? Somebody would say, okay, duh, preacher. But, you know, I believe that it's not just me. I believe that this can happen to all of us. That sometimes we can begin, if we're not careful, to hinder the moving and operation of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Not just in our services, but in our own lives. Amen. That's right. Are, are, y'all aren't so religious that I can't speak this truth, right? <laughs> y'all aren't so holy and pure yet that I can't speak this truth. See, the... It's not that difficult, I don't believe, for us to grieve the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Especially whenever the Holy Spirit begins to speak certain things to our heart and our life. And then yet at the same time, we're not always obedient. Listen, I'm not trying to preach to you, uh, you know, perfection because there was only one who was perfect. His name was Jesus. But one of the other things that I, and so I just wanted to say a few things. Number one, I wanted to say that, look, that song that Rich sang, thank you for singing that, by the way. You know, I got turned on to that song by David Crowder. I don't know what you think about David Crowder. Some people aren't going to like David Crowder. Some people are, are going to like it. But guess what I found out? David Crowder got that song from, you ready? <laughs> Hank Williams sing. <laughs> okay, now hold on a second, though. Hold on. Because look, do we know every detail about Hank Williams no. Sr.'s life? No, no. Well, let's just go ahead and read these lyrics this brother wrote, this gentleman wrote. I saw the light. I wandered so aimless, life filled with sin, I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord. I saw the light. Yeah. Did Jesus come into your life like a stranger in the night? Yep. Or, or were you already, you were just looking for him, right? No, I know you weren't. But yet somebody told you about Jesus. And when the time was right, he came in like a stranger in the night. And he did a suddenly in the midst of your life. He said, I saw the light. I saw the light. No more darkness. No more night. Now I'm so happy. No sorrow in sight. Praise the Lord. I saw the light. Just like a blind man, I wandered along. Worries and fears I claimed for my own. You know, there's a problem in the people of God today that we claim worries and fears as our own. And look, that's a spirit of error. That's a lie from the enemy because the word of God says that he has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. But yet there are people, even in this church tonight, I'm, I guarantee, I don't know. I'm, I'm not saying that you told me recently. I guarantee you there are people in this sanctuary tonight that sometimes are being stricken by a spirit of fear. And yet, the, and, and, and when, it's not that we don't know that the word of God says that he hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and of a sound mind. But yet at the same time, some people would venture to say, but you don't know what I've been through, preacher. You don't know the things that have taken place in my life. You see, my life is different than your life. And I have fears in my life that you just don't really know about. See, you don't know what I've been through, preacher. And what I would say is this, the Holy Spirit knows what you've been through. And the Word of God says that He hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. So if we take from the world that, oh no, this thing's just a little bit too big. 
This thing's a little bit too bad. And guess what? I no, 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 no. That's a spirit of error. That's a spirit of a lie that's trying to come in and trying to wrangle with the spirit of truth that wants to speak truth to you. Amen? And so I didn't mean to get up on all this other than to say, look, he said, I saw the light. He said, I was a fool to wander and stray. For straight is the gate and narrow is the way. Now I have traded the wrong for the right. Praise the Lord. I saw the light. Hallelujah. So look, I mean, did the brother get saved? It sounds like it. Did the brother go back to the glass of whiskey? He might have. But guess what? The reality of it is, is that every last one of us in this room, after we've seen and tasted and seen that the Lord is good, we ourselves have ventured back in a wrong direction. And some people, I ain't never touched alcohol to my lips. Okay. All right. I get it. I, I, I'm not going to be able to explain everything in each video. All right. I will say this. That uh, I wanted to make a comment because there was a, a couple of my close brothers that I love very much pointed out a couple of things. I've been talking to some people, six of y'all, I've sent some videos this morning on uh, this guy, John Kilpatrick, uh, Pastor Kilpatrick, that I've been watching some of his series called Vexed. And I've been so blessed. And the reason I sent the ones that I sent you last night, I stayed up till like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning watching these videos. And what was so amazing, I put a little message in there. I was like, dude, I love this guy's preaching. I get so convicted. Like, I'm, I was over here, like, laughing. In, I mean, I know that typically conviction doesn't cause laughter. But at the same time, like, I'm just like, dude, this guy is just, bing, bing, bing. And I was like, Lord, I won't be like that when I grow up. I just want to speak the word of truth. And not sit here and have to be sorrowful if I'm worried about that I've offended someone. Right. Because look, if the truth is the truth, let the truth be spoken. Right. Let God be true and let every man be a liar. I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings any more than that man wants to hurt people's feelings. So, but look, I'm going to put his stuff up on the, on our on our website because I think that the teaching. And listen, I don't want to try to reproduce. I could I could do that. I could listen to all of his stuff and then I could read. Pre, not re-preach it word for word, but I, I he, he got a different kind of anointing coming off of this word, okay? And and so, but look, he may be affiliated with some people that I wouldn't completely agree with, okay? I don't know, but guess what? I'm not over here to overjudge who is he. I know I watched every one of them videos, and I hope that you, I'm not asking you to trust me with your salvation. Come on, friend. I'm asking you and I to learn how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's right. That's right. Hear the voice of the Holy Spirit for ourselves. Yeah. That we would be like, and listen, if you don't like his ministry, stop. You know how easy it's going to be for you to turn it off? <laughs> it's going to be like really, really easy. And if you have any questions about anything, you know me. I love to talk about Jesus. So I'll be more than happy to talk. The reason that I'm sitting, listen, even my daughter, I, I told her, I told, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't tell my daughters I'd pay them money if they want to. You do what you want. I said, I will pay you money, girl. You need a bonus? It's in the mail. But I need synoptic proof that you wrote summary about these each of these videos. And at the end, if you finish it, you can get a paycheck. Because they say, buy it, sell it, not. Guess what? I'm going to give bonuses out. I can't offer that to everybody. <laughs> but listen, because you know why? Because as I started watching this, I was like, oh my God. Yes. I, yes. the preacher, the pastor, yes. have been influenced by demonic spirits mm. since I have been standing behind this pulpit. Yep. And let me tell you a secret, mm. brothers and sisters. It ain't just me. That's right. It ain't just me. We as believers don't realize the damage that we can cause to ourselves as we open up doors. And listen, oh, what you've been looking at, don't worry about what I've been doing. But let me just tell you this. It's not just a spirit of lust that you can open up the door to. We can open up a, a door to a religious spirit. We can open up a door to a critical spirit. We can open up a door to a spirit of gossip. Yes. That's a problem. And look, I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes things are going to be said. I'm saying all this because guess what? I'm not going to really say it anymore. I'm trying to share my heart. I'm trying to let people know anything that I do, I am honestly doing because I want to help God's people. And if I didn't think that this stuff could help God's people, I wouldn't put it up there. I hope you trust me enough in that endeavor. You know, something else that was kind of brought up, you know, about the whole 
The only reason I'm bringing this up is because after I tell y'all this, if I put it up on the website, some of y'all may watch it. And if you watch all the way through to number 18, you're going to find out in towards the end because he starts talking about the spirit of pride. And he talks about, you know, one of the symptoms of a prideful generation, y'all hadn't got there yet, I don't think y'all got there, is all the selfies. Mm. Oh, I was like, dude, are you mm. doing this? He's like, oh yeah. He's like an old man too. He's like, oh. and then he's like, <laughs> and I've watched my own people in my family do some kind of crazy thing with their eyes. I'm like, what you doing with your eyes? Oh, you got to do that, Daddy. You got to do that because it's hot. It makes you look like you're sweet. And so he makes the point in this video. And look, he says, who are you? He said, they got married women. Oh, now I can guarantee you, there might, who knows? I'm, thank God I'm not, I mean, I'm not on Facebook anymore. But let me just say this. I made this comment last time about social media. I don't care if you're on social media. Really. I don't mean that ugly. Please, if you like social media, do your thing. I made a point last time, though, is this. Is that social media, if a believer that is truly born again and filled with the Holy Spirit is going to be on social media, he is, she is, he is supposed to behave their lives in such a way that it brings glory to God. Just like if you did walking down the physical street, you should also, walking in Facebook street, live for Jesus. Period. Done deal. That's the truth because you belong to God. You were not, you were purchased with a price. The precious blood of the Lamb purchased you. And he, and he made the comment. He said, they got married women person in their lips and pose. Who are you doing? Look, who are you looking all sultry for? Who are you looking all sexy for when you marry? And there was a woman in the audience. She was like, oh my gosh, she was so embarrassed. But you know what? They still ain't men, brother. <laughs> They still amen the brother. So anyway, what is my point? My point is, we're going to speak truth by the grace of God. And you know, one of the things that I even brought up when I was trying to talk about social media was really just the truth. And I was talking about some people that I know personally, really, in my family. Like, in other words, if the Lord is desiring to deliver us from this wicked world and the Holy Spirit comes in and brings truth to us. And listen, again, I'm, I'm not trying. To, okay, let me just keep talking. So the Holy Spirit is trying to bring truth to us and we receive it with gladness and joy because that's what the word of God says we're supposed to do. But then if we're scrolling through through various types of social media and we're focused on transgender, if we're focused on, you know, adultery, if we're focused on whatever, if we're focused on pornography, if we're focused on all kinds of unclean things and the messiness that's in there. And, and it's one thing just to see it because we're going to see it in the world that we live in. But it's like when we start kind of like, <laughs> like it starts to tantalize our flesh. Do you realize that the flesh, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let me just stay focused on my message. But, but whenever our flesh is excited about something that's ungodly, that's not good. And if we keep feeding that, that feeling, and listen, listen, gossip. I've talked about this before. Why does it, why did it used to feel so good to my flesh when I would gossip about people? It's got to be demonic. It's not the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit doesn't want me gossiping and talking bad about people. No. So that's another spirit of another kind. Anyway, and listen, let us understand too as believers and growing up in Christ together that you understand the conviction of the Holy Spirit? Do, you, do, do we understand that? That whenever the truth of God's word is spoken and there's things going on in our life that the Holy Spirit's not pleased with, that sometimes that we, we feel conviction of the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit trying to minister to us and let us know that there's things in our life. Listen, there's some things that when I was watching one of the videos, I was like, dude, you're killing me. But, but at the same time, it was things that I kind of already moved through. And I just had this smile on my face. Lord, I love your word. Yeah. Your word is truth. Heal me with your truth, O Lord God. That's one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit. To reveal error in our life. To expose error in our life. So that we can ask the Holy Spirit to remove it from us. But if we stay stiff-necked and hard-hearted. And then we wonder why we're not getting set free in the areas that we're asking God to set us free from. Then we wonder why. Well, no, don't wonder why. Let us not wonder why anymore, child of God. 
Amen. Let us submit by the grace of God to the will of God. Amen. Hopefully that makes some sense. All right. So anyway, I'm just letting you know I'm putting that stuff on the because I believe it can help you. I believe if you'll take the time with it, I believe it. And I don't agree with every I don't agree with him where demon spirits come from. I don't think he understands that. But guess what? I don't need him to understand that because your Lord showed me from somebody else. That's right. Oh, okay, so anyway, but that's another I don't agree with a lot of people, some of my favorite preachers, I don't agree where they believe demon spirits come from, okay but, but nevertheless, there's a lot of truth amen, that we can glean from these other sources, I believe that, alright so look, this is what I wanted to talk to you about, so this is the King James version of the Bible, and I want you to see um, this part right here I'm going to shrink this down so that we can get a little bit so we can see a little bit more. Can you see that? I know it's getting small and I apologize. But look, I'm going to go ahead and uh, screenshot this right here so that I can just make a point. Because I was telling you that every word uh, is dripping in these, in these letters. So he blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. And look, it was contrary to us. And look what he did. He nailed it. The King James Version says to his cross. And then I talked about this word it right here. And I want you to know that, listen, I'm not trying to get fancy on you, but I do want to make a point that the word it right there, it's, it's considered a pronoun, right? And that and in the Greek, the word is, if you were going to spell it in English letters, it would be autos. Okay, but the word can mean, it can mean me, it can mean him, it can mean I, it can mean it. So what you have to do is, that's why there's varying, there's differences in translations. The ESV version says, he made an open spectacle or he triumphed over them in him. Talking about Jesus, right? The King James version says, in it. Last week I told y'all about the NIV and I get it. I'm not crazy about the NIV either. But sometimes there's places in the NIV where it literally translates what the Strong's Greek Concordance says about a particular word. It literally gives you the actual meaning of it. Okay, so I always go back and compare and I never take so. But I want to make this point because look, the word it right here. There's a word, and it's, this is what it's called. It's called antecedent. I'm not trying to do an English class, but I want to make a point. An antecedent is telling you what the pronoun belongs to. The pronoun belongs to this right here. So the right translation is it. But look, it's also him. Because you don't separate the him from the cross. You, because he is the sacrifice. But if you go in, and this is why it matters, because you see the plan of God played out even on the very words that the, that the authors through the Holy Spirit are writing down. And they're trying to let us know, listen, this isn't just a miracle worker right here. This isn't just a great teacher. This is the one who came to be sacrificed for our sins. And look, if we go back and we look at this and we see this, this is the issue. And you were dead in your sins. Uh, some translations say in your trespasses, you were dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh. But look what he did. He quickened or he made you alive together with him and he forgave you all of your trespasses. That's why the word it there is actually important to understand the cross. Because look what we're talking about. What, what did he do? He he spoiled them. Let's look at the ESV right here for this. Because I like this word. I want you to see this. In verse 15, where it says in the King James, he spoiled them. Look what it says right here in the ESV. He disarmed them. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I, I, I like the King James preacher. So I really want you to just stick with that because that's what I like. Okay. Well, let's look. Spoiled. Boom. Let's go ahead and flip, lift it up for you here. Boom. Boom. Disarmed. The meaning of the word spoiled literally means to disarm. 
So what I'm trying to explain to you is this. I used that illustration. Maybe it was a bad one where somebody comes into your house. They have a gun. They have they have you in bondage. They have you under their authority. They're telling you. And then all of a sudden the script is flipped. Right. And that now you have the gun. You now have power. And what the scripture is saying here is that in Christ, he disarmed principalities and power. Yes. Now, one of the things that I also want you to see is that in this particular passage of scripture, I want you to see this right here. First Corinthians two, eight, he disarmed them. Listen, they weren't ready for what the Lord was doing. I want you to see this right here. It says in second Corinthians None of the rulers of this age understood this. Well, let's go back to verse 7. He says, we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God. In the King James, it says the mysteries of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. What this mystery is saying is that God had a plan in the ages past. And that the plan in the ages past was that he was going to send his only begotten son to pay the penalty for the debt of sin that lingered over the head of humanity. See, the enemy had a right to hold you in bondage and to hold me in bondage because we were born of Adam and we were under the penalty and the curse of the power of sin. But good news is that God had a plan. And it says right here, look. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. And then some people would probably say, well, but that's not what that's saying, preacher. That's not saying the rulers of this age will end the King James. Listen, I'm not trying to lose you. I'm trying to. It says none of the princes of this world. If you look at the word princes, it's archon. It's the same word that Jesus uses for the prince of this earth talking about Satan. So some people would say, well, that's not what that's talking about, though. It's talking about men. Okay, well, okay. You think I didn't think about that? I did. Okay, so let's back up a little bit. So who were the men involved in the crucifixion of Jesus? Who were some of the main players? The Romans. Huh? The Romans. Okay, specifically what? Maybe Pontius Pilate was involved in that, right? Okay, who else? The Pharisees, right? The high priests, right? So they, under, under, under Jewish law, they wanted Jesus to be crucified. Okay, who else was involved in the, in the betrayal? Judas. Judas, a very follower of the Lord Himself. So let me ask you this: You know what? The, so let's say that it's talking about these rulers of the earth. Who's behind them? Who's behind the rulers of the earth to uh, pull this accomplishment off? Satan, Satan himself. Yeah. Well, we know Satan entered Judas. Yes. Yeah. The, Jesus. What did He say to the Pharisees? You're of your father, the yeah. devil. Okay, and then Pontius Pilate was trying to wiggle out of the deal, right? He's like, man, his wife came out there. I've had this horrible dream. But Pontius Pilate, according to history, you'd have to do, read some extra biblical information. Pontius Pilate was fearful of Caesar. Yeah. Because Caesar said, you better keep those Jewish rebellions under control, buddy boy, or else you're going to lose your position. Well, who do you think is the power behind Caesar? Satan. Satan. He's the one that was putting everybody to death. He's the one that coated the Christians with pitch and tar and lit them on fire. He's the one that caused... See, see Caesar's a type. Caesar Nero had Paul's head cut off. You get the point. This is this the spiritual princes of the world. So what I wanted to say is this, though. How, look, I wanted to tell you all this last time, and that's why I had to go back to this. Because I was just sitting there laying in my bed studying this. I was like, oh, my gosh, dude, this is so good. How long do you think it took the devil to realize he made a boo-boo? <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Like, surely whenever they hung him on the cross and the sky became black, and all these things. And even when the graves started popping open, right? And dead people started to walk around. You think them demon spirits weren't tripping then? You did it. Like, oh my God, what did we do? Had they known they would not have crucified the Lord of glory because Jesus disarmed them. They had bondage. They had authority. They were holding mankind under their sway. And then all of a sudden, the dead start rising and walking around. But you know what's really interesting to me is this, is that after he raised from the dead and after the Holy Spirit descended, maybe it was Peter, I don't know. I'm just speculating. What did Peter say? He said, I go fishing. And the other disciples said, we go with you. 
The idea in the Greek is that he was leaving the faith, going back to his former occupation, and his influence he was exerting over the other disciples, and they were being carried away with, with his error. Yeah. And then the Lord comes and ministers to him. He says, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. He goes on to say at some point in time, though, Jesus is talking to him, and I'm really shooting from the hip here, so forgive me if I get it wrong. But Jesus ends up talking to him and saying, you know, well, Peter says, but what about him, Lord? He's talking about John. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what, what, you, what is your problem, son? But well, what about him? The one that, you, you know, I, I mean, you and I were so close, and then all of a sudden John swerved in on the race. I don't get it. What about him, Lord? He said, you don't need to worry about that. Mm -hmm. If I let him live <laughs> until I come back, you, you don't need to worry about that. Focus on what, what I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. And so, but then what happens is that Peter said at some point in time, you know what Peter did? I don't know when it happened, but at some point in time, Peter said, yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. I received your correction. That you spoke to me. And now I'm going to rise up and under the power and the anointing of your Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. I'm going to preach forth the wonderful works of God. And when he did, 3,000 people were added to the church. I like to wonder in my mind, you think maybe that's when the devil really realized that he had made a boo-boo? Uh-oh. What is going on here? And so when we're talking about disarmed principalities and powers and even triumph over them in it talking about the price that was paid the record of debt that was laid upon your back when Jesus paid the record of debt that was laid upon your back the very law that you were guilty of that I was guilty of and then set and caused something to happen in the spiritual realm okay that reverberated in the spirit that changed things and then all of this it was a suddenly suddenly they were disarmed suddenly when they had power, they no longer had power. And I got good news for you tonight because, look, I'm not sitting here trying to talk about other people's testimonies and stuff like that. But just as the Holy Spirit did us through Jesus, through G just as Jesus did us suddenly and disarmed principalities and powers, the Lord's still doing suddenlies in people's oh, lives yeah, today. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, Bill got up here and shared his testimony with us when the, in a dream. The word of truth ministered to his heart. Look, well, I'm just going to say it. Pamela shared her testimony with me, and I'm like, wow. Wow. Holy Spirit came in and disarmed principalities and powers. Yeah. Uh, suddenly, yeah. he's still disarming them today. That, that's the spirit of truth. That's the word of truth. Maybe some of us have been bound so long, vexed so long, oppressed so long that we don't know anything else. I got good news for you. God has the last say so. His word says, hallelujah, that he triumphed yes. over principalities. Yes. Yes. The enemy thought that he had you. The enemy thought that he had me, but in the name of Jesus, he ain't got nothing. He ain't got nothing but a hell to face is what he's got. And the Lord's calling you and I to walk in victory tonight. So that we can tell others the good news yes. about Jesus Christ. So that they too can be pulled out of darkness. Hallelujah. And into his marvelous light. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. <clears throat> Praise God. I forgot my little notes. But look, I just wanted to share with you. So the title of my message tonight is A Transference of Power. A Transference of Power. And I want to bring you to Matthew chapter 12 real quick. And I want to, I want to kind of share... This particular, uh, this particular passage of scripture. Alright, and because and, what I'm trying to talk about is this, is that in Colossians chapter 2, what did the words say? The words say that Jesus disarmed principalities and powers. We understand that Jesus has the power within himself. How did he do that? He disarmed them through his sacrifice when he paid the debt of sin. And when he paid... Your debt of sin, when he paid my debt of sin, 
He paid the debt of the transgressions and the trespasses that we ourselves. So he, he made a way for you and I now to be clothed in his righteousness. We partake with him. We're about to get into that here in a second. But we become one with him through faith and what he's done. And now through that, through faith and what he has done in his cross. Now there can be a, the transference of power that's given over to us because the devil is defeated. Be based upon the ministry and the sacrifice of Jesus. And now we just need the Holy Spirit to make it real to our hearts. And we need to yield to the truth of God and let the Holy Spirit have his way. Yes. Amen. All right. So Jesus casted the devil out and Jesus knew their thoughts. And he was talking about the kingdom of Satan divided. And look, let me just say this real quick because this is. And I don't really want to waste too much time on this. Or it's not a waste of time, but I don't want to spend too much time on it. There's a lot of validity that we could take this scripture and we could think, okay, well, so if we see a person on TV, let's just say, let's say we see a person on TV and I don't really understand it because it seems like their doctrine is full of error. I don't look, I think it's great that we research people and that we look to see what they're teaching. I think that that's an awesome thing. At the same time, let's be careful that we don't become so critical that we can't like, okay, but but let's say that there's some situations that, I mean, like, there's some preachers that I've seen some things that they do. I'm just not interested in, in submitting myself under that because I just personally don't feel like that's the spirit of the Lord. You, if you want to watch, you watch whatever you want. I'm not here to control your life. I am not going to tell you what to, I don't want the job of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> no, no, ma'am. No, sir. I want to teach you truth. I want to ask the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom and guidance. Amen. Okay, but nevertheless, in this particular situation, let's pretend we see a man. We've seen some things that he's done, some antics he's done. And yet at the same time, we see maybe on the television or on a video, it looks like some demons are cast out of somebody. And it looks like these people for, for a minute. We don't know. We can't really follow them around. So we don't know if the, if the demon's coming back or not. But let's just say it looked like there was a manifestation of deliverance. And then what we would say is, well, Satan, if he casts out Satan, his, he's dividing his own kingdom. But hold on a second. Jesus would say that Satan's not going to divide his kingdom. I get that. But look, whenever those Jewish people were operating under a exorcism, what happened to the sons of Sceva? They were at some point in time taking authority over demon spirits. And then all of a sudden they tried to use the name of Jesus. Okay, let's just say this. When a Jesuit priest goes and performs an exorcism and we're told that they now have freed somebody of a demon spirit, you believe that that's Jesus? I'm here to tell you right now, Jesuitism is not of the Lord. And so what I'm trying to say is this. Is it possible that the devil can actually do more good for his kingdom by mimicking a deliverance? Oh, now you're getting deep. Now you're really getting into a conspiracy. What are you talking about? Well, if the devil sends a vessel of his own and there's a manifestation in the physical that looks like somebody's been freed demonically... And then now everybody is now drawn towards the teachings of this particular person. And what he's doing is he's feeding them lies. And now he's controlling masses of people because they've been brought underneath this spirit of error. Then in reality, uh, what, what's happening is, is that is this his kingdom being divided? Or is this his kingdom being strengthened? Is, yes. there, is there a possibility that the demon hides? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I believe that. I mean, I believe that. I believe that has a lot to do with medicines and things like that. Hides, you know. He's imitating light. Yes, absolutely. He's imitating light. So in the end, the point that I'm trying to make is, is that the devil will do anything that he can do to feel like he is going to build up and bolster his kingdom. Yes. Okay, so I just wanted to say that right there. I, that wasn't really the majority of what I wanted to talk about. That was just lying down. Okay, but look what, look what Jesus said. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. And then he goes into this. How else can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil or take his goods except he first bind the strong man? Then he will spoil his house. Now look, the word house there is oftentimes used, oikos is oftentimes used to describe this human body that houses and can house the Spirit of God. 
And this particular man, this blind and dumb man that could not speak, he, he was housing at that point in time a demonic spirit. Okay, and so, so at that point in time, the strong man was Satan, binding him up. The strong man, Satan, had this man bound up. And this man could not take authority over. But then Jesus comes in and casts the devil out and frees him. Then he does a teaching on once you're free with the spirit of God and the demon spirits are thrown are thrown out. That you definitely don't want to open yourself back up to that kind of thing. But look, this is what I wanted to tell you. Jesus has come to this earth to bind the strong man. Jesus' work on the cross by paying the debt that held you and I guilty under the law of God. Jesus now by by dying and paying that penalty has released us from under the power of the strong man and that in Christ he is bound. See, when you and I got saved, listen, this is the word of God. I'm not making something up. I'm not bringing some strange doctrine. The word of God says we've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. What I'm trying to tell you is that we're operating in another realm. We're operating in another sphere. We, every place, what are you talking about? The atmosphere of God, man. We moved to a new neighborhood where grace flows. You ever heard? Come on, grace. Amen. Divine influence upon the heart and its reflection in the life. I'm talking about the spirit of God lives on the inside of you. The spirit of God lives on the inside of me. You and I have victory and authority over the works of the enemy. Yes, right. He said, I've given you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. Thank you, Jesus. A lot of times our problem is, is that we're exposing ourselves to things that are trying to degrade our faith. Mm -hmm. yep. We're opening up doors to things that are letting the spirit of error in. Mm. And we're, and we're, we're, we're petting the spirit of error. Yeah. We're, we're clinging to it. We're, we're, we're caressing it. And I'm here to tell you that that's not going to work. It's not going to work for our individual lives. Each and every one of us in this place, we've taken a Wednesday night to come to hear the word of God. That means you love God. That means you love his word. And listen, God doesn't want to waste time. He wants to set us free. He wants to empower us with his Holy Spirit. He wants to use us for his kingdom. Hallelujah. He wants to use us as witnesses. So there's a transference of power that took place whenever Jesus died and triumphed over them in it. And now when we hear the word of God, whether we realize it at first or not, the old man that was born of Adam, that was under the bondage of sin, that had the record of debt, the, the handwriting of ordinances that laid upon us, it's now been moved out of the way. And now we're new creations in Christ Jesus. We're seated in Christ in heavenly places. We have access to. To a power source that's greater than the spirit of the world. He that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. We have power and authority. Amen. I was listening to this other preacher that I like. I'm just going to tell you, like, I ain't heard him say nothing bad yet. And I'm just like, this dude feeds me, bro. David Hernandez. You know what he said? He said, ain't no such thing as a stubborn demon. No. Ain't no such thing as a stubborn demon, my friend. And no, dude, I tell you what, it bore witness with my spirit. He said, you know what the problem is? We got believers not lining up under the authority of God. Yes, right. That's the problem. All right. That's the problem. The, the, the stubborn demon ain't the problem. It's the believers not, not taking upon themselves and understanding what the word of God says. The reality of it is, is that we like flesh sometimes. Okay, let me, let me move forward. Oh yeah, I ain't done yet. It's about to get bad. Just go ahead. Hold on to me, friend. Just just love me. Because, because if you think that I like telling you things that I know are going to frustrate or, or, you know, cause you to turn against me. <laughs> Don't let the enemy t to turn you against me. All right. So look, let me just see what my little cheat sheet was. Matthew 12. Let's go to Romans chapter 6. <clears throat> Romans 6. You ready? I want you to see this particular passage of scripture. Now, many of you that have been with us for a long time, y'all didn't read this so much. As a matter of fact, I went to go check at a place today that makes wooden signs, and I think I'm going to get it put right here, this particular scripture right here, Romans chapter 6, verse 6. I'm going to get it engraved in a piece of wood. We're going to mount it right there to that wall right there, and it's going to look right over there towards the cross, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin 
might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. The New King James Version says that we should not be slaves of sin. So what I want you to see now, we're talking about a transference of power. We're talking about the fact that Jesus defeated and triumphed over principalities and powers in it. And now the Apostle Paul is saying this. See, what did I preach last week? Y'all remember about the renewed mind. The renewed mind understands who he is in Christ Jesus. The renewed mind begins to think from a spiritual mindset. The renewed mind begins to think with the mind of Christ. He begins to line up and agree with what the word of God says. That's why you and I can't be, for lack of words, monkeying around. When we got free time, we should be putting the word of God. I'm not saying that to poke you and to get you mad at me. I'm trying to tell you, you and I cannot put enough of the word of God on the inside of us. You and I cannot spend enough time in prayer. Look. Yeah, one of the things that since we started as a Bible study, however many years ago that was, Lord only knows, that was a long time ago. One of the things that I repeatedly try to teach was this. That a works-based faith without realizing it will put faith in how much it reads the Bible. Mm -hmm. It will put faith in how much it goes to church. Yeah. It will put faith mm -hmm. in how much it prays. And when we do that, we're actually taking something so beautiful, so powerful, and we're turning it into a work of the flesh because we're changing the object of our faith from the darling of heaven, which is Jesus and what he did for us at the cross. And we're now putting our faith in works. Okay. But with that said, in all these years, I've been saying that to you. We do read our Bible, right? Yes. I know you have, Bill. <laughs> With all that said, <clears throat> you do still pray, right? Yes. With that said, we still go to church, right? Yes. I sure yes. hope so. I sure hope that we're reading the Word of God for ourselves. Mm -hmm. I sure hope that we're spending time in prayer with the Lord. I'll preach it to the preacher first. <clears throat> I'm just saying, how are we going to we need the spirit of truth. Amen. Fill us up, Lord. But the object of our faith ever remains Jesus Christ and him crucified. Why? Because the apostle Paul gives us commentary, 1 Corinthians 1.18, for the preaching of the cross, the word of the cross, the message of the cross, the truth of the cross, is, unto the, is foolishness to them that perish. But unto us that are being saved, it is the power. Amen. It is the power of God. Why is it the power of God, preacher? Because in it, he triumphed over principalities and powers. In it, he did gave us a transference of power. In it, the old man died, was buried in Christ, and a new man has been resurrected to newness of life. In it, in the finished work, the efficacious work of Jesus Christ. That's a word we use in medicine, efficacy. What does that mean? It means it works. It means effective. When a medication has efficacy, it means it does what it was supposed to do. The cross has efficacy. What are you talking about, preacher? Because the cross did what it was supposed to do. Yes. It removed the power that the enemy had over the fallen race of Adam. Because born of Adam, they were born under the influence and the power of sin. But the last Adam became man and he was sinless. And he offered his sinless life as payment for the record of debt that hung over you and I. And he paid the wage of sin, which is death. He paid it for us. That's why he resurrected from the dead, because he had no sin in him. And now that same spirit that raised him from the dead can now quicken your mortal body, quicken my mortal body. And you and I can begin to walk in that same triumphant power that the Lord purchased for you and I. It's a matter of belief. It's a matter of believing the written word of God that teaches us. Now, look, that's what the scripture says. 
knowing this, you got to know it. You got to become familiar with it. And really and truly there is, I've preached this before. There's several knowings in the book of Romans chapter six. This one here describes to be able to perceive it, to begin to understand it. It's an increased understanding of knowledge. The first word, agnaeo, did you not know, was it describes ignorance. There was a time when each and every one of us, we simply just put our faith in Christ. You know, we put our faith in Christ for salvation. And then, you know, I used to like the way Lauren Larson, he's coming April 23rd, by the way. Hey, little brother Lauren's coming April 23rd. Praise God. It's going to be a good time. Amen. But, but he used to, he used to talk about that, about, about the fact that we, we were ignorant to the, you don't have to know much to get saved. You really don't have to know a lot to get saved. But in order to live for God, you're going to have to know some things. You're going to need to know who you are in Christ. You're going to need to understand that Jesus gave you victory. You're going to need to understand that it's the power of the Holy Spirit moving in your life. You're going to need to understand that if you and I remain rebellious to the word of God, that we're opening up doors and giving the enemy opportunity to come into our life, to wreak havoc in our life. And then we wonder. We wonder why. And we're allowing these things into our life. Listen, I'm not here. It is not my job to meddle in people's personal business. It is not. But, but at the same time, if the truth is spoken and it hits people between the eyes, let it be. Amen. Let, let it have its way in our hearts and lives. It start with me, Lord. It's crucified with him that what the body of sin. Now, look, I didn't want to get into this. Too, well, no, I did. That's not true. Let me, let me change this real quick. The body of sin. I'm going to go to some, don't freak out on me right here. It's just a point. It's just, I'm just trying to make a point. Okay, so this is the Greek text. Let me see. I, I mean, I can read it, but it takes me a little while. Oh, Lord. Let's see. I don't want to waste too much time on this, but. Okay, here we go. You see this word right here? It's hard to see it, but this is a sigma, omicron, Mu, alpha, that word is soma. Y'all heard of that word before, soma? Mm -hmm. It's a word that's been around. They had a medicine called soma. Don't take soma. Don't, don't take more than you're supposed to because it's going to open up a door. Okay? But nevertheless, the word means body. The word soma means body. Look, so this is, the, this is our reference point. Body of the sin. You see this word right here? T, it's actually like a T. It would be, be, be pronounced test, test. Tes hamardias. Tes hamardias. The body of the sin. Now, what did I, why did I go through all this trouble to bring this out? Because I need you to understand something. This word the, now many of y'all already understand this because we've been around together, hanging out together for a long time. This is called the definite article in the Greek language. The word the, what does a definite article signify? It signifies who said that? A noun. Thank you. It signifies a noun. Why is that important? Because a noun is different than a verb. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> why? That's why it matters. Because look, a verb describes actions of sin. Right? We get so caught up in the actions of sin. We're like, oh, that brother's still smoking. The Lord wants to deliver you from smoking, by the That's way. Right. If it's destroying your body, the Lord doesn't want you. If there's an addictive spirit behind it. Listen, if you're addicted, if you can't stay out of the casino, if you can't stay off of a pornography page, if you can't stay out of a, a, from smoking a cigarette, if you can't stay away from dipping skull, if you can't stay away from committing adultery, if you can't stay away from a fornication relationship, if you can't stay away, if you can't stay, if, you, if there is something that's driving you back to that very thing, yeah. uh, oh, uh oh, if you can't stay away from Facebook, Long enough to get something else done in your house. Man, you know how I know it's demonic? It can't let me. You know how I know it can be demonic? Because I've experienced it. Whenever I used to post little things on Daniel used to post, oh look, I got a new little word. Here you go. Throw that up there. You know what I would do, dude? I am embarrassed to tell you. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you because, look, I want you to grow. And if you can look at me like a buffoon, then I hope you grow. <laughs> I would go back and I would look at my post. Look, I had 12 today. No, literally. <laughs> 
If I had 15 one time, I was doing good, bro. <laughs> oh, what a great word. 15 people. Wow. 15 people. And like, dude, maybe a couple times I got up to 30. Woohoo. Oh, man. And I was like clinging and waiting. Oh, who's going to who's gonna say something now? Is somebody going to, oh, give me a comment. Come on. Make me feel good about my flesh. And my, oh, woohoo. I was tingling on the inside. Make me feel so good. Good, 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 good. And that's what people do. And then, and then, like, I'm just saying, like, we take pictures of ourselves. Look, pow, you know, yeah, put that up there. Oh, look, pop, 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 pop. Oh, people love me. People like, da, 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 whatever. No, 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 help us, Lord. Anyway, if there's, an, if there's a spirit behind it that keeps driving me to do it, especially if the Lord told me not to, then that is the noun of sin. That's the factory of sin. That's the sinful nature that we received from our father Adam in our first birth. It's the very power of sin that drives us to do those action words of sin. But Jesus died to set us free from the power of sin. Now it's important that we understand that the sinful nature will not be completely eradicated until we see him. And then when we see him, we will become as he is. Not like the Mormons say, we're not going to become a, a little God and own our own planet. No, we're going, to, we're going to receive a glorified body. We're going to receive a glorified body and sin will now be eradicated. I believe that from us. Well, that would be a beautiful thing. That we'll be able to, yeah, some of y'all know what I'm talking about whenever you're about, I'm going to pray. Preacher said I need to get in the presence of the Lord. And what do you do? You get in the presence of the Lord and you start to pray. And then all of a sudden he starts trying to bombard your mind. And tries to get your head off. And I'm like, oh man, I can't. No, no, no. Listen, that's not normal Christianity. Yes, it's normal to be attacked. Yes, it's normal for the enemy to attack our mind. But I wanted you to know something. Normal Christianity connected to the sinful nature is that I'm supposed to be dead to sin. That's right. According to what the word of God says is that I am now dead to sin. Listen, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. We died with him in the mind of God. The old man born of Adam died with Jesus. Why? So that the body of the sinful nature might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not have to serve sin. We should not have to be slaves to sin. Sin is not your master, my friend. You've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Sin is no longer your master. Jesus is your master. That's a good word. Amen. It's a good word because it's his word. All right. Now there's a struggle that takes place. Let's go to Galatians chapter five real quick. Galatians five, verse 17. It says the flesh lusts against the spirit. Let me go to another version just so you can see. I want you to just see it. The, for the desires of the flesh. The word lust literally means a desire. That's what it means in the, in the original language. Sometimes the word lust or desire can be a good thing. There's a scripture that says that the Holy Spirit lusts for us. Or the Holy Spirit desires us. The Holy Spirit desires our attention. The Holy Spirit desires us to be, to communicate. The Holy Spirit desires us to trust Him. The Holy Spirit desires for us to invite Him into our presence. He, he wants that. He, he wants us to want Him to help us. He's the, Jesus said, I'm going to pray to the Father. And He's going to send another comforter. It's so good because the, the word, the word is, if I'm not mistaken, it's alos in the Greek. I'd have to go back and look. But there's two different Greek words that describe another. One is heteros, which means different of a different kind. Alos is where we get our word alloy, which means another of the same kind. See, when you make an alloy, you take two different, but it's one. They become amalgamated together. Jesus and the Holy Spirit are one. Whenever Jesus says, I go away to the Father, but I will pray to the Father, and he will send another comforter. Even the Holy Spirit of truth. You know him for he has been with you. But he will be in you. Jesus was talking about when he went to the cross. And he paid the final sin debt. That hovered over humanity. When he dealt with that record of debt. And then when we put faith. When we hear the gospel. Guess what happens? The Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside. He makes our heart his home. The Holy Spirit now is living on the inside of us. Amen. So look. The desires of the flesh are against the spirit. Now. 
Okay, let, let me just show you something real quick. I think that this is interesting for me personally. So look, this is this is the King James, and I want you to see. Now, so it says, for the flesh lusts against the spirit. Now, I want to show you the NIV. I know I keep saying that. I know you don't like it, but look how the NIV translates it. The sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit. You see that? So the NIV translators translated the word flesh as sinful nature. That's the only point I'm trying to make. And I want to go back to the King James now because I want to show you something. So right here with the word flesh, I'm going to go ahead and, oh, uh, that's not what I meant to do. Sorry. Let's right here, let's open up the word flesh and let's see what it says. Because it doesn't say homardia. It doesn't say ha homardia like I showed y'all earlier, the sin. That's not what the word flesh is. It's sarks. You see that? S-A-R-X. And, and look what it says. And it says a lot of different things. It says flesh stripped of the skin, strictly the meat of an animal. By extension, the body, as opposed to the soul or the spirit, as the symbol of that which is external, right? Uh, of passions. Okay, look, but this is the part I really wanted you to see. Carnally minded. I wanted you to see that part because I want to make a point. When it, so the word flesh, and I've described this before, the word flesh can have a lot of meanings. It can mean, number one, it can mean physical birth. It can mean your external body. But obviously, in Galatians, it's not talking about either one of those things. Like, it's not trying to say your physical body is in contradiction to the Holy Spirit. Yes, in a way it is, but do you think that this lifeless flesh is what's driving you towards sin? Listen, forgive me if I'm trying to make us think, but I think it's important that we understand some things. This flesh by itself is not going to make you pick up sin. It's, it's, an in, it's, it's an inanimate object that doesn't have a mind of its own, this physical flesh. Something is driving this flesh to try to do. Now, sin, though, see, the sinful nature, it likes to stimulate the concept of flesh, which would be the carnal mind. Or that part of man, let me just make up my own definition. The part of man that is tainted with sin. It still stimulates the flesh. The part of man that's tainted with sin. We still have a sinful nature. And the sinful nature, it makes our flesh feel good. Right? That's why whenever you were a teenager and that pretty girl smiled at you, or even worse, whenever you were hanging out in bar rooms and that girl across the bar room smiled at you and you're like, oh, I know what that means. Before you even went to go talk to her, your heart might have started fluttering a little bit fast. And all of a sudden you had this feeling of well-being. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Am I just talking to myself right now? <laughs> or you think about some kind of a drug or something that you used to be you used to do. And even before you got to the drug dealer and bought the stuff. <laughs> oh, 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 it's going to feel so good. And, and it, or, or alcohol. Whatever. Gossip. That's what I'm trying to say, dude. How does gossip do that? But it does. Y'all know what I'm talking about? It's spirit of gossip. It made me feel so good. Why is it? I don't get it. Because the sinful nature is affecting our flesh. And it's driving us to go towards the very thing that's going to try to destroy our relationship with God. If it didn't feel good, my friend, we wouldn't do it. If it, if it didn't tantalize, you get the point. All right. So to be carnally minded, but look, so what we need to understand though is that these things, there's a war going on, right? It says the flesh lusts against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. What is the Holy Spirit saying to us? He's saying stop. He's saying don't do it. And and look, we're like, yeah, but he didn't really mean that. <laughs> Come on. You be your prude. Come on, man. You offend me, bro. Like, I'm using Facebook or I'm picking on Facebook, man. I don't care about Facebook. I'm just trying to make a point. Because, look, 
I'm using it for good purpose. Okay, but how much garbage are you putting in your body? Listen, and maybe you're not. Maybe you don't even look at Facebook. Then guess what? You should be able to laugh like I did last night when that preacher was talking about stuff that I used to struggle with and I'm not struggling with anymore. And I was like, dude, I love your preaching. I love the fact that you're not scared to offend someone. This is the thing that we have to understand and agree with as a church. We at least need to have unity in this area here. If somebody wants a secret sensitive message, they can find it in this neighborhood. They can find it in this community. That's not us. Hey, well, well, but what if I bring a visitor? Okay. Praise God. We're going to trust that the Holy Spirit is going to minister the truth to them. And that they will be changed. Yes. Amen. And then if whenever they leave, they're your friend and you invited them and they're like, man, look, there was some stuff that guy said that was pretty good, but blah, blah, blah. Now you're there, my friend, and you get to minister to them. <laughs> There's other, look, God's calling you to minister to people too. Yes. This ain't just a one man show. Praise God. You don't want it to be a one man show. Yeah. And look, that's one of the things, look, real quick. That night that the Lord spoke to me, from that day moving forward, after Lauren had preached, and from that day moving forward, by the way, look, like Dustin Miller's coming on the 29th of this month, too. Oh, cool. Dustin's coming back. I called Dustin out. I'm like, dude, I'm believing God for a move of the Holy Ghost. Because, look, the Holy Spirit, I didn't even tell him all that. I just said, look, and he's like, I was just thinking about y'all yesterday. So, look, let's just be praying. Let's be believing God. Amen. But, look, God wants to move. And, and he wants to use us. The other day, like I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna tell y'all all of it. The other day, somebody contacted. Well, somebody contacted Rob. They needed prayer, and the person contacted me too. And so Rob forwarded me the message, and I thought about calling up Brother Kirk and Sister Brenda, and I said, well. But Rob used to go with me all the time to pray with people, and I said, look, let me see if I can't get Aaron and Rob to go pray because I was working. Okay. And I said, but you know what? This is a good opportunity for other people in the body of Christ that have already walked in this, right? So anyway, I didn't get to talk a lot to Robert after the fact, but he sent me a testimony that they were very faithful. And that, and then I asked Aaron, I said, Aaron, I said, brother, how did, how did that go? He was like, brother, look, he said, I don't know what Rob felt, but I was ready to build myself an altar right there because the Holy Spirit descended in that room. And hallelujah, he was ready. To, look, praise God. Hallelujah. God wants to set us free so that we can all be you. He wants to distribute the gifts. That's how I was praying in that room. Lord, I'd love to have more of the word of knowledge in me. I'd love to have more of the word of wisdom. But Lord, if you prefer to give it to somebody else in the body, give it to them and let them be utilized so that the body of Christ, so that we can all be used by God as he sends people here to be delivered, to be set free, to be ministered to because they're God's people. You know how long God had to get me to the place? I didn't even think I was prideful. And I'm trying to tell you that I realized now I was. I didn't really feel, I was preaching against the spirit of control. Oh, you're making yourself vulnerable. There's probably people watching on video that now they're going to say, uh-huh, I knew that about you. You don't know nothing about me. <laughs> I've been preaching against a control spirit for 15, 20 years. And guess what? The Lord swept through and showed me, Matt, your motives were pure in that you were trying to help me. But I don't really need quite as much help as you were giving me. <laughs> so what I need you to really do is just back off a little bit, buddy boy. And I need you to let me do my job. And I want to let the Holy Spirit have his way. Yeah. Amen. I don't want to control. I don't want to tell you what to watch. I don't want to tell you. If you ask me. Look, I'm going to warn you. Listen, I'm going to preach the truth. I'm going to tell you what the foundational message of the truth of the gospel is. The foundational message of the truth of the gospel is that Jesus Christ and him crucified is what sets you free from the bondage of sin. And that if you will continue to believe that, the Holy Spirit will move in your life. And he will give you the grace that you need in order to live for God. In order to walk this thing out. He, listen, will you fall? A righteous man falls seven times when he gets back up. Will you fail the Lord? Every last one of us has and will possibly fail the Lord. But help us, Lord, that we don't have to live continuously falling. We don't have to live the life of an Old Testament saint. 
where we keep on falling and failing. Oh, let me bring my offering back to the top, to the temple. Let me lay my hand of sin and transfer it over to this animal. Let me slice this animal's throat. Oh, Lord, I did it again. And let me bring my animal back. We don't have to live that way because guess what? We're no longer slaves to sin. Right. The record of debt has been paid. The transgressions have been removed. The, we've been clothed in the righteousness of Christ. The Spirit of God lives in us. He who's in us is greater than he that's in the world. Yes, yes. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead now quickens our mortal body. I'm telling you what the Word of God says. This ain't got nothing to be with me, my friend. This has to do with the Word of the Lord and what God wants us to believe. And, but there's a battle going on. There's a flesh lusting against the Spirit. Spirit against the flesh. They're contrary one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. Let's see how the ESV says that. So that... So that they're opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. I'm looking around this room and I can tell that most of y'all are saved in here. I think y'all all saved in here. Amen. What are the, some of the things you want to do? You want to understand the Word of God better, right? Amen. You want to read the Word of God more, right? Amen. I believe that. Tell, come on, if you're saved, you want to read the Word of God. Amen. You want to pray. Amen. You want to have a closer walk with Him, right? The flesh is trying to oppose that. The flesh says, oh no, I'm not letting go that easy. Oh no, 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 no. You're going to hold on to what I want to hold on to. You're not, I'm not letting go that easy. And it's trying to, trying to oppose the work of God in our life. So in, rea in reality, what we need the Lord to do is we need Him to rebuke that spirit of rebellion in us. Right? If we have a spirit of rebellion. All right. So listen, I'm going to close. I think I'm closing with this last passage of Scripture. Romans chapter 6, verse 12. Maybe the music ministry could at least be aware that we're about to close this thing out with a song. If y'all want to start heading up here, actually, y'all can do that. Y'all might, might just have to strum your guitars while I, while I finish up this message, but that's okay. The Holy Spirit can move through that too. I'm not, I'm not about the, the prophets that, I mean, oh Lord, forgive me. Let me know what's okay. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes people play the play the keyboard, but you know what? Let me. I don't know everything. Lord, forgive me. Because is there a problem with somebody prophesying while they're playing the keyboard? I don't understand why there would be. But anyway, that's not my preference. But hey, God can move. Amen. All right. Let not sit. So look, you're dead in Christ. You've been buried with Christ, and then you've been resurrected to new life. So look, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. He's saying, don't let it happen. Stop. Don't let, don't let sin be king in your life. That's what the word reign means right there, right? It's talking about a king and a kingdom. Don't let it reign. But look, do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness. But present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God's as instruments for righteousness. Now I'm closing with this thought. The word instruments right there, you know what that word means in the Greek? Weapons of warfare. Well, look, let me just show you. Let me, let me go back to the King James real quick. I'm about to close this out. We're going to worship. We're going to leave this house worshiping the Lord. But I wanted you to see this. Look, I want you to see what this word means. Look, look what it says. It's a tool. It's a, it's a utensil, a tool. Especially offensive for war. Look, it's a weapon. Any tool or implement for preparing a thing, but more specifically, look at this, arms used in warfare. So when you look at the passage of Scripture now and you see what it says, don't yield your members. What's a member? It's a body part. Don't yield your members as weapons of warfare of unrighteousness unto sin. You know, look, back in the 80s, I wasn't a big time drug dealer. I was like a little low level player. Somebody needed something. I could go, oh, no, I'll hustle up. You me, pitch me off a little something, something. Let me go get you something. Okay. And I, I would just help him get high. I, I'm not proud of that. I'm just telling you what I was doing. I would help them get high. So I go get them a little something, something, and they give me a little something, something. You know what I was? I was a weapon of warfare for the front righteous. I was helping spread 
the enemy's plans for people's lives. But now in Christ, what the Word of God is saying is this. Look, don't yield your body parts. And look, you can go. we can go through each one. What are the things that we can do with our hands? I mean, there's a lot of things we can do with our hands that would be unrighteous, right? We can... Oh, you get the point. Our feet bring us to places we ought not go. Our eyes look upon things we ought not see. Our mouth says things we ought not say. Our ears, we allow it to hear things we ought not hear. And whenever we offer these weapons of warfare up for the kingdom of darkness, Paul's saying don't do that. Why? Because you've been born again from the dead. The enemy has been defeated. Jesus triumphed and over principalities and power. Instead, Yield yourselves to God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as weapons of warfare for righteousness unto God. Now you can let your feet carry you to church. Now you or to a lost soul that's outside the walls of this church. You can allow your ears to listen to the word of God. You can allow your eyes to light upon the word of God. You can allow your lips and your voice to speak forth the truth of God. God wants to use us. Amen. Let's worship the Lord tonight. Amen. And look, the altars are always open if you need prayer. Praise God.